part two in our mitochondrial series. In the last video, we talked about how the electron transport chain in our mitochondria, in that inner mitochondrial membrane, were actually visualized by researcher Douglas Wallace as individual batteries charging and discharging with electricity. It's absolutely fascinating. I received many comments about explaining the mitochondria in more depth. And so that's what we're going to do in this video. So our mitochondria are what we learned about in middle school biology, the bean-shaped little organelles inside most of our cells. And these cells create ATP, our energy currency in the body. When there's a decrease in mitochondrial voltage, in mitochondrial function, in that production of ATP, then symptoms arise. Disease starts to progress. And so mitochondrial health is vital to our overall health, regardless of what we're talking about, the cardiovascular system, the respiratory system, the immune system, all of these things are working with mitochondrial function. And our mitochondria are, like I said, those little bean-shaped organelles that we learned about in school as the powerhouses making ATP. Now, in that mitochondria, we have the external membrane, the outer membrane, and inside of that we have this little twisted cystre, the inner mitochondrial membrane. And in that inner mitochondrial membrane, that houses our electron transport chain. And there are four complexes protein complexes in that chain, and the fifth one is ATP synthase. As that ATP synthase turns, it creates infrared energy. Now we know that our mitochondria has a covering of structured water outside of it and on the inside of it. That structured water is maybe a better name for it would be crystalline water because it kind of acts like a liquid crystal. It is able to capture light and energy and uh, really help those quantum particles of electrons and protons tunnel through those protein complexes. So you have one, two, three, four, and that fifth ATP synthase that grabs a proton from that inner membrane space and brings it through the membrane, creating that final ATP. And the inputs that the mitochondria are using are oxygen from our breath, uh, different cofactors from our food that enter in donated electrons into the electron transport chain. But we see that the mitochondria are also very sensitive to light. And light can be captured by those protein complexes and make the transport of electrons much, much more efficient, creating more ATP and more energy, which we now know is very important for our health. Like I just talked about how a decrease in that ATP or mitochondrial function really is associated with so many diseases and disease states. So when we're looking at different lights and that uh, near infrared light helping uh, that mitochondrial electron transport chain to really become very efficient at making that ATP and that energy source. Now when we look at some of the modern lighting that we have within our houses and on our screens, there's a very narrow bandwidth of blue light in that modern lighting, right? In our LED light bulbs, in our screens, there's a very narrow light of blue light and it's very chaotic for our body to make sense of because our bodies evolved over millennia with this very wide spectrum of light from from the sun, from natural light. That's why there's importance placed on getting that AM sun at, in the morning. 
just getting that red orange light that we see at sunrise, getting that full spectrum of light. It does so many things for our biology, our hormonal state, our immune system. Every single, uh, almost every single cell in our body has a circadian clock that is triggered and stimulated by the natural light in our environment or the artificial light in our environment. And when we can sync our rhythm with the natural sun, with that natural light, then the biological action inside of us that's triggered from that natural light is much more diverse. It's much more robust, making natural light a beautiful intervention. And the same goes for our mitochondria, getting that infrared energy from the sun, getting that uh, full spectrum of light really allows our body to utilize that light in a way in the mitochondria where those electrons can tunnel through those protein complexes more efficiently. And our modern lighting that is just a very small fraction of just one of the uh, different ranges of light, that blue light, it isn't even the full spectrum of blue light. It's a very narrow range of blue light. It actually causes those proteins to become further spaced apart. And when we're looking at the electron transport chain, again, we usually learned in school that's sort of like a beaded necklace, right? But really it's circular because of this twisted inner mitochondrial membrane. And not only is it twisted, but these Proteins don't stay evenly spaced. They coalesce to create what researchers are calling super complexes or ultra complexes, allowing for the quantum tunneling of electrons and protons through that ETC to create ATP more efficiently. So our mitochondria are not just utilizing the food we eat and the air we breathe to create energy. They are utilizing light in our environment. And if that light is natural in its uh, origin, then we are getting this full spectrum that's really uh, informing our biology on so many different levels. And if it is not natural, if it's that low, um, very narrow band of blue light, then we see that those protein complexes become further spaced apart and it's harder for those electrons to quantum tunnel through the ETC and create ATP, that energy source. So in our next video, we're going to talk a little bit about how our mitochondria are sensitive to the frequency of our thoughts and to the phonons from sound in our environment. So stay tuned for this next video. Like, subscribe for more of this content, and I'll see you soon.